God has a plan. God has a unique plan that only God could devise. So we don't have to improve on it. And in his plan, he has chosen Mary to be the mother of his incarnate son. I one time was at a mass at a parish where there was the, it was the traditionally, a, I suppose we call it the black, it was the African-American church. It was a Catholic mass, but when the preacher would say something like, God has a plan, they'd say, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. And we'd know, you know, some of us would not like that, of course, because we're not accustomed to that. But in a way, you know, when you say something that's awesome, and everybody just sits there and says, yeah. We want to know that God's plan has something to do. Actually, if you think about it, if there were only you, just you alone, in this entire world, God has a plan. It would be for you. And now it is for you. If you know there are millions and billions of people around us, and as Mary fits into that plan with her role as the mother of God and as we celebrate her assumption it's a recognition it's an understanding hopefully that Mary is fulfilling her role and has fulfilled her role at least in, in one way of looking at things she continues to be the mother of God and to be our mother but we are called in the same manner to fulfill our role. You know, Mary prays her Magnificat. If you ever wonder, somebody says, do you know, I oftentimes will ask people in confession, do you know Mary's Magnificat? And usually they say, no, no, what is that? Well, we just heard it this morning. It's her prayer in praise of God, but in the, the understanding of her role, our understanding of the dignity that she has received not because she would be then very pompous and proud, but because she has something to fulfill. And I think each one of us should be able to write a prayer like that, to, or even to adopt Mary's prayer. You know, to think of that, that we're called into God's service. As I said, God has a plan. There are no throwaway segments to that plan. You know, God does, never just sits down and kills time. Do you ever think of that? There isn't anything like that. You know, we, we sometimes say, well, we have, to, we have time to kill. <laughs> Do we really? Do we have time to kill? I mean, you know, time to waste? God doesn't waste time. God doesn't waste words. God doesn't waste people. There are no, no throwaway words, moments, people, Think of that. I don't mean it should make us stressed out, but there should be a kind of an awareness, an alertness, that wherever we are, we're in the presence of God. Wherever we are, whatever we're doing, whatever we're saying, the purpose of it is always to fulfill the plan of God. I have to question myself at times. Is this really God's plan, my plan? My errancy, my kind of selfishness. No, that part isn't God's plan. We're trying to improve on it, and we can't. We have to follow Mary. Follow Mary's wisdom. Now, I think that prayer says it all. And adopt that prayer, or at least write something that's similar to that, that fits for you. But it will never be a, one, a prayer of pride or prayer of, oh, this ought to please God. No, it will always be, I want to honor God, and I want to bring God into the moments, the, every moment of my life. God tells Mary, this is what I'd like you to do. That's all she needed to hear. I think often of the scene when 
Jesus had risen from the dead, and Mary of Magdala went to the tomb. Remember that? And she looked in, and the angel's there. And then she looked around outside the tomb, and there she saw this man there, but she, for some reason or other, she didn't recognize Jesus. She thought it was the gardener, and she said, Sir, if you've taken the body away, please tell me. I'll take care of it. And all Jesus said to her was, Mary. He just said, Mary. But it was Jesus saying her name, probably praying her name in a way, and she immediately responded. Everything in her body tingled, I'm sure. How do I know that? Well, never mind. <laughs> but I think that it had to be just unique and special. I think often in eternity, God looks at Mary, our mother, and just says, Mary. Would that you'd wonder that God again and again just says, Paul, or Elizabeth, or Rachel, or Nick and says it with that reverence and that abiding love. And you get assumed, why not?